The bees' honeycomb is a marvel of natural engineering. They have got plenty of honey. Everything they need is here. It's a place to raise their young and store their food. And it's all made from wax, a substance so labor intensive that the bees have to fly the equivalent of 12 times round the earth to produce a single pound of it. This almost looks man-made, manufactured. I yeah. mean, it doesn't look like yeah. something from the natural world. The precision, the fine straight lines that they've created right. is extraordinary. Right, right. It's uh, an engineering wonder for sure. Look at the, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Hexagons here. Yeah. It is amazing. They've just done it for thousands and thousands of years. They were born to do it. They just instinctively know that this is the shape of their home. But there's more to the bee's behavior than raw instinct. There's another reason why they build in hexagons. And to reveal that reason, we need to turn to the universal language of all nature. Mathematics. The bee's primary need is to store as much honey as they can while using as little precious wax as possible. The bee's honeycomb is an amazing piece of engineering, but why have they evolved to produce this hexagonal pattern? Well, actually, they don't have too many choices. If you try to put pentagons together, for example, they just don't fit together nicely, or circles leave lots of little gaps. If they want to produce a network of regular shapes which fit together neatly, uh, then you've really only got three options. You can do equilateral triangles, or you could do squares, or you can do the bee's hexagons. But why of those three does the bee choose the hexagons? Well, it turns out that the triangles actually use much more wax than any of the other shapes. Squares are a little better, but it's the hexagons which use the least amount of wax. It's a solution that was only mathematically proven a few years ago. The hexagonal array is the most efficient storage solution the bees could have chosen. Yet with a little help from evolution, they worked it out for themselves millions of years ago. So like everything in nature, bubbles are just trying to economize. They're trying to get as small as they possibly can. But in the case of bubbles, they can do it perfectly. A single bubble in the air is always a sphere. At first sight, it seems obvious that the bubble should be round. But why is the sphere so special? The sphere is one surface, no corners, infinitely symmetrical. Of all the shapes this bubble could be, the sphere is the one with the smallest surface area, which makes it the most efficient shape possible. And it is because nature loves to use her resources effectively that we can see spheres everywhere we look. The Earth is round because gravity pulls the planet's bulk into a ball around its core. Water forms into spherical droplets. The shape minimizes the amount of surface tension needed to hold the droplet together. And a spherical shape gives simple life forms, like this volvox plankton, optimal contact with their surrounding environment. But not everything is spherical. And because bubbles are so thin and flexible, we can use them to create other shapes. So a single bubble in the air is always a sphere. But if they touch each other, they can save material for both of them by sharing a common wall. And so they do. If they can save surface area by taking advantage of their environment, they will. So when you've got just one bubble, the sphere is the most efficient shape. But as we add more bubbles, we see the geometry changing. So in this case, we've got four bubbles, and you can see them meeting at a point. But put a shape in the middle, we don't get a spherical bubble. We get, in fact, a little tetrahedron. With four faces, they're not exactly flat, they're parts of spheres.
But each time, the, the bubbles are trying to find the most efficient shape for the arrangement of bubbles. So now we've got six bubbles, we've got a little cube appearing in the middle. This is nature's laws at work. The universe is always trying to find the most efficient solution it can. And as we pop them, the bubbles change, finding the most efficient, until we're left with a sphere again. It has no choice. <laughs> but what's most remarkable is that those solutions are so often neat geometric shapes. Wow. That's a dodecahedron. That's fantastic. And they're mm -hmm. almost perfect pentagons, aren't they? That's they really are. surprising. They're not bulging really very much at That's all. Right. That's right. That's right. So 12 bubbles around make 12 faces, and the most economical shape that they can make, the lowest energy, is the dodecahedron in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> the soap bubble reveals something fundamental about nature. It's lazy. It tries to find the most efficient shape the one using the least energy, the least amount of space. And it appears there are fixed rules about how it finds these economic solutions. The bubbles are incredibly dynamic, but each time one pops, they're always trying to assume the most efficient shape, the one that uses the least energy. And what they're doing is trying to minimise the surface area across the whole bubble structure. This beautifully illustrates one of the fundamental rules of bubbles, which is three walls of a bubble will meet always at a 120 degree angle. But if we in fact make each of the bubbles the same size, a rather magical shape starts to appear. the hexagon. And when you pack lots of hexagons together, the pattern that spontaneously emerges is the familiar sight of a tightly ordered honeycomb. So when we see that pattern at the heart of the beehive, it is in fact echoing some of the fundamental geometric rules of the universe. But it was the Greeks who first took this innate fascination with shape and turned it into a subject of its own. They believed that by understanding its principles, they could describe the whole world. And they gave a name to this new idea, one which meant measuring the Earth. They called it geometry. The mainstay of Greek geometry was a discovery of five perfect shapes now called the Platonic solids after the Greek philosopher Plato, who believed these were the building blocks of nature. So we've got the tetrahedron with its four faces, the cube with its six faces, the octahedron with its eight faces, the dodecahedron, 12 faces, and the most complicated shape of all, the icosahedron with its 20 faces. Today, these are more commonly known as dice. But most Surprisingly, these are the only five shapes like this that can possibly exist. They're the only perfectly symmetrical solids. It's this almost magical symmetry which made the Greeks believe that these shapes were so important. They associated them with the building blocks of nature, air, fire, earth, the cosmos and water. These five shapes built the natural world. It's very easy to dismiss this approach as naive. After all, it's clear that the world around us isn't made out of just five neat geometric shapes. But perhaps we should have more faith in this ancient intuition. Because by laying out the laws of geometry, the Greeks had in fact tapped straight into the code that shapes all nature. But what's surprising is that we can find the same laws, not just in rocks and minerals, but deep inside ourselves. I've come to the Department of Chemical and Structural Biology at Imperial College in London. Steve Matthews studies how individual atoms are built up into living systems, like you and me. In this tiny wire loop is another crystal, 
but this time it's a crystal of protein, part of the machinery of living cells. Just as it's possible to work out the atomic structure of the salt crystals with X-rays, we can deduce the shape of the protein molecules in the same way, though the results aren't quite so easy to interpret. Now, I'd be hard pushed to actually give a name to, to that shape mathematically. I mean, it looks like a blob. But no, it doesn't have a shape, but many of these blobs come together to form shapes. So there's a huge amount of structure and symmetry in, in this protein. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, and that's amazing. We've got a cylinder now. This is a real surprise to see geometry at work inside our bodies. But evolution is, you know, creates a very efficient process. So symmetry is a very efficient way of building you know, these types of structures. So by a process of evolution, there's, the biology has discovered that Before us, yeah. the, the geometry gives it the best shapes. Yeah, that's right. But if you really want symmetry, then we can move over to a virus particle. This is now I recognise that. That's an icosahedron. Yeah, that's an icosahedron. This is one of the shapes uh, the Greeks were obsessed with. But um, that's right. it seems that viruses that's are too. That's right. But it's very striking because the the physical world you somehow expect maybe salt crystals to be symmetric, but uh, the biological world everyone considers rather a messy one. But this is not messy at all. This is beautiful. The geometric shapes which we find at the heart of our cells are the most efficient that nature can produce. It seems like the Greeks could have been right after all. 